This is my grandma's giant Acapulco. She bought it in 1993 as a commuter. It has not been to the shop since March of 2012. A few days ago, I replaced the front tire, but I didn't replace the back tire because of rust and because I wanted to do one other thing. Yes! All right, it has been two days since we replaced the front tire. And since then, really anything's happened. And the reason it's been so long since I last worked on it is because the nut, uh, the bolt here was rusted in place. So I had to get my dad and uh, get it loose. Okay, so now we're going to take the back wheel off and replace the tire. Once again, we're putting Tech 9, we're putting uh, Kenda Tech 9 tubes and uh, surface drifters. tire pressure gauge so to bleed the air out so I have to do it with a Yeah this tire is done. I mean look at that cracking right there. Look at how bad that is. The tire should not be able to do that. Dad joke alert. We're gonna retire this tire. <laughs> That is something my dad invented. That's a joke my dad invented. Sidewalls were much stronger then than they are now. Well, they were uh, different. Let's just say different. Like now tires have like an exo layer. I wouldn't say this is harder than um, the road bike tires, but that, then again, we were replacing that tire with screwdrivers, which I would not recommend. If you have access to tire levers, or you can afford getting them, get tire levers for changing tires. Because screwdrivers are just terrible for the wheel. Now I can just peel it off the wheel. <laughs> this has never happened before. The tire is sticking to the rim strip. There's also a piece of dental floss in the valve hole. Oh, boy take the label off. Oh, this is not fit up. There we go. Okay, so whenever you're replacing a tube, always take the valve, the valve cover off of the tube so it fits in the valve, into the hole. Uh, something that uh, bike shops do is whenever they set up a new tire, they um, line up the label with the logo on the tire. I just want a little bit of air in here, not a lot. Let's see if I can get this on by hand, because I know a lot few days ago I got lucky and was able to do it all by hand. PSI, but that gauge is a little off, so it really needs 19 PSI. Looks fine to me. Um, let's go all the way. Alright, let's put this back on the bike. Careful not to let it rest on the railing. Okay. Right, now we 
Mini, but uh, I knew I'd be working with a lot of old bikes with rust possibly rusty chains, so I chose the bigger. I, pro I chose the Pro Bike Tool over the Park Tool CH Mini. I like how you can adjust the handle on this one, so you can put the most amount of strength into this. Up oh, there it is. First two, the first crank's always the hardest. There it is. Chain ring with the smallest cog in front makes it easiest. So, I'm um, just looking for eight tight links. This looks like a solid chain. I'm going to shift all the way down to the lowest, I mean not the lowest, the highest gear in the back, but I am going to switch to a bigger chain ring. So I always use the middle chain ring for tuning. And this I'll get a screwdriver and you start tuning. Right, so these are the limit screws. This is, adjusts how far out the derailleur can go in board or outboard. And it changes as you use it and as the cable stretches. So you can go too far inboard. Just bring it out a little. I took the bike for a test ride and it felt better than a modern bike, probably because of all its modern parts and its steel frame. I love the way it rides and I'm so excited to give it back to my grandmother. Thank you for watching and if you're new to the channel, please subscribe. We do lots of how-to videos and show you what the state of Illinois has for mountain bikers and gravel riders. If you want to learn how to adjust bike brakes or see me and my sister do something totally hilarious, click one of the videos on the, in the top corners. Again, thank you for watching. <laughs>